Right, let's see what this thing can do. to AC Motor Control number seven. I'm here in the warehouse today. I've taken Heath Robinson controller over to play with this. So I want to have a little uh, spin up of this thing because it's been sat here now for, oh I don't know, three months. I haven't, I haven't even looked at it yet. So let's take a look. <laughs> I think I'm gonna strap it up onto the table just in case I accidentally do some harsh regenerative braking. I don't want to tip it off because it's not light. There we go. That ain't going nowhere. First of all, let's take a little look at the connections on this thing. Everything about this thing's chunky. Oh, hello. Wow, it's actually got new smell. I don't think this thing's ever been used. So, what have we got here? We've got six wires. C1, A1, B1, C2. Now what you're seeing is the six wires is each end of each three phases. So when you see six wires like that, it means you can wire the motor up in um, Delta or Star. Yeah. Let's do some basic safety checks because this thing was found in a barn. So it'd be nice to see if it's uh, all okay. So the first test I'm going to do is with an insulation meter, I'm going to run a thousand volts through each phase coil and measure what comes back on the air. So basically it's going to, it's going to check if any of the coils uh, sort of burnt out and uh, have making any electrical contact with air or any of the wires are making any electrical contact with the cabinet of the motor, then you know you've got serious problems. Thousand volts. Beautiful. And this button's dodgy because I've, yeah, it's misuse by me. Oh, do you know what? It's not going to work today. Sorry about that. The little multimeter, the little button on that's been temperamental for ages, but it's been working fine. And now it's decided to not work. So if you want a really cheap insulation tester, one that goes up to a thousand volts, then this, the Vicky VC60B. It is, I'm not going to lie to you, <laughs> cheap, nasty stuff. But the insulation tester does work really well. And it's got a, a hole button on it, which is probably really unsafe. Because it will now output 1,000 volts there. Give you nice little shocks when you touch it. It's got a lovely big display, though. And it does work. It's even got a backlight that's not too shabby. So if you need a really cheap 1,000-volt insulation tester, honestly, 30 quid on eBay, brand new. You can buy them. So, yeah, that's something you can do. I'll check it on my real meter too. So, all you want to do is hook up something to the earth of the cabinet. Oi! Dropped it. So, you want to hook up one to the cabinet 
and one to each phase on each end. So let's check it out. Right. That'll be the cabinet. And you want to, uh, first of all, check that. So that's outputting 1,000 volts DC. Check that you've got a good connection to your cabinet by going cabinet to cabinet like that. So I know now that that's attached to the cabinet, and I know that the meter's working. Let's go into phase one. And you see we've got 122 mega ohms, million ohms, which is fine. Other end of phase one. It's going to be very similar because it's the same phase I'm reading. And then on phase two, that's beautiful. Other end of phase two, lovely. Phase three, beautiful. And the other end of phase three, again, lovely. No worries there at all. So, it's better, 0.3 ohms. Cross phase one, and we got cross A one, this is, this is the only bad thing about this, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and across phase C, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 again, so it's just a basic test you can do. You know, from doing those two tests, you know two things now. You know you've probably got good coils without visually inspecting them. You've got good coils. You know they're not short into the metal work, so they're probably not burnt out. Um, and all three are showing very similar values. So that's all really good signs. So what we'll do, we'll wire this in star first. So if you, if you notice, Every cable is labelled A1 and A2. So there's A1 and there's A2. So basically for phase A, you've got phase A, B and C. That's showing A1 is one end of phase A and A2 is the other end of phase A. So if you take all the twos, for example, or all the ones, doesn't matter, put them all together, right, that's your centre tap point for all three coils, and then you've just got your three phase input here. Does that make sense? One, two, three, A, B, C. Except it's C, A, B, <laughs> but who cares? Wow, we've got something going on. Making some weird noises though, what's that all about? Oh. <laughs> let's uh let's get those out of there. I didn't see them in there. Ah. <laughs> and now we can look a little bit in real life on the bench about the voltage and frequency relationship. Yeah, we're going a little bit faster. What's gonna happen is as we increase the frequency too much with the same voltage it's going to lose its sync so okay that's fine that's spinning faster a little bit faster again you see the the motor does increase in speed but I think it's that's about as all it can take at five volts. If we go a little faster, okay. So if we go faster yet again. Okay, so I've gone a little bit faster. You can see now that 
the motor has completely lost async. It's slowing down. Now we're pulling more current. So what we're going to do is, is keep the keep the frequency as it is now. I'm going to slightly increase the voltage to 10 volts. Or I'm going to increase it until I hear the motor start to pick up again. 6 volts. Eight volts for it. Okay, so it's quite happy now. It's happy to pick it up again. So if we pick up the voltage to twelve volts. Now what will happen now if we if the if the opposite happens, if we put the voltage too high in relation to the frequency, it'll run at that frequency, but it'll it'll waste loads of energy. The uh electromagnets on the stator will become saturated and you won't get any more speed. You'll get a bit more torque, but yeah, it's not gonna be good. Now while we're at relatively safe levels, I want you to see what happens when I slow down the motor or not slow down the motor physically but slow down the magnetic field in relation to the motor ready I'm going to do that now watch the DC bus voltage did you see that did you see that shoot up to 20 volts so what I've got here is I've now got a 30 volt DC bus I've got the motor going too slowly uh, the, the frequency is too slow. So what's happened is, if you look at the voltage and listen, the motor's speeding itself up and then regen braking back down because the, the frequency is too slow. So you see it's not stable at all and it's drawing too much current. So now if we increase the frequency to match, There we go. You see it's stable again? Well, so you can hear the motor RPM. As we, because that big fan on the back, as we lower the B DC bus voltage and keep the frequency the same, you notice at some point it can't keep up anymore. There you go, you see? slowing down see so that that frequency and voltage relationship is really important if you were monitoring your rotor control you would call that your slip frequency yeah so if you think about it you're measuring the frequency of your rotor and we're doing it visually by looking at it and increasing the voltage which is stupid but it's a great way to show you how how exactly that works and what goes wrong when it when it doesn't work so what the controller will do eventually is, um, well, next, next week, is measure the speed of the rotor and then output a speed proportional to that. So you can increase or decrease your slip frequency. I can't get over the amount of air that that, that fan kicks out. This is also a good test. I don't know if you can hear me over the wind. It's also a really good test of the um, the snubber circuitry because that's going to be having a lot more um, inductive spark backs, uh, back EMF coming off of this motor, so I can measure the temperature of all the diodes and the capacitors in the minute and the resistors on the RC network. And just check that they're, you know, they're not getting too hot or under too much stress. 